Welcome back to Screen View Mirror. I'm your host, Emma, and you're listening to Screen View Thoughts. On this episode, I'll be looking at sound, silence, and ennui, and uh, examining Marguerite Duras's 1975 India song. Now, the film is based on one of her previous novels, and in my opinion, at least the overall style of it is quite theatrical. However, in a recent article for the New York Times, Jay Hoberman said of the film, and I quote, it is less theatrical or literary than it is ritualistic, and as the title suggests, musical, end quote. The particularity of this film is in its use of synced sound. All the dialogue and the the narration is off screen, and even the stage directions that are sometimes spoken happen from outside of the frame. And, for example, there's a scene of a couple dancing in the living room, and although they're having a conversation and a dialogue, their lips never actually move, so we hear what they say, but we don't see them say it. And that goes on for the whole film, and it's very ambiguous. It's very difficult to discern who's saying what and what they mean because you don't really see them say it. And at some point in the film, there's even a conversation that takes place entirely outside of the frame. You have two people meet, then they leave the frame. The camera sort of still focuses on an empty room, and the conversation that they have is just heard from outside of the film. So this use of synced sound really struck me when watching the film. I never saw anything like it. And even when looking at, for example, the stage directions that are spoken, I mean, it's kind of reminiscent of Godard's stylistic choice in two or three things I know about her, except in that film, the stage directions were, I mean, not always, but on occasion spoken from within the frame if they were spoken at all, whereas in India Song, I mean, the sound is never shown. So you're shown silence, but you know there's a conversation or some sort of narration or description or stage directions that are going on because you still hear the sound adjacent to the motion picture. So why does this matter? Why did Duras choose to construct the film like that? Well, I can't speak for the director, but I have two kind of interpretations of of the significance of that stylistic choice. So the first idea that I have is the idea of detaching and then reattaching the sound to the film in order to mirror the detachment of the characters from their identities and then their subsequent sort of separate attempt to reattach themselves to life. And we'll get into the themes of boredom and colonial guilt in and the story of the film in a second, but just to make it clear, I really think that the stylistic choice in the form of the film mirror its content. Speaking of content, this film is set in 1930s India. By the way, we don't get to see India at all. I think it was filmed in a in a French chateau and we we really see the detachment um, in, in that respect, but it's filmed in 1930s India, and you might think, well, wait a minute, India was a British colony, but there were parts of India that were actually French colonies, so um, just to make that clear. So I think it the, the stylistic choice of detaching the sound and then reattaching it also mirrors the detached relationship of imperial powers and their colonies, and then the subsequent reattachment of either troops or private individuals to those colonized countries. Um, There's a scene in Apocalypse Now where the American soldiers visit a French family living in Vietnam and they're having dinner and they sort of talk about the war and the French soldiers don't really seem to understand that the, sorry, the American soldiers don't seem to understand that the French people living in Vietnam feel like that is their home and they feel attached to it, but really, I mean, they're just reattached to it because of the whole colonization, um, because of the whole history of, of uh, colonization. So again, in that respect, you could compare it to the um, colonization of, well, at least the idea of colonizing another country and the idea of one country kind of detaching itself from another, because again, there are differences in, in imperial rule and those differences are highlighted, but at the same time, 
reattaching itself in order to enforce power and exercise influence. So we have this parallel between the detached and then subsequently reattached relationship of colonization and the detached and subsequently at least attempt at reattaching uh, themselves as the characters to the lives that they have. So on to the themes of the film. I mean, this film is a tale of colonial guilt, a tale of uh, leprosy of the soul, of ennui, which is manifested in the slow walking of the characters. I mean, really, you should watch this film when you need to slow down a little bit and kind of take a deep breath because it's very slow. The, the pace and the rhythm and the rhyme, if you will, of the film never really change and it's a very slow, kind of almost agonizing boredom that you feel when watching the film. So again, the slow walking, the lying around on the floor, completely unbothered to go sleep in bed, the the dialogue, I mean, the, the tone of the actors is very, I can't say monotonous, but I can say dramatically dishonest. I think there's... Uh, Apart from one insignificant emotional outburst, there's a general lack of passion in the actors' voices. And sometimes they're even overpowered by the music, and that kind of culminates in a sort of muted ennui. And by the way, the score uh, by Carlos D'Alessio is absolutely fantastic, but I think that the hollowness of the dialogue is also compensated by the beautiful score of the film. But either way, I think the emptiness in the voices of of the characters kind of aligns with the emptiness of their lives because they seem lost and out of place and almost exiled from their own identity. They're like astronauts of escapism trying to break through the wall of their ennui, but then yet they're also blissfully unaware that their lifestyle only adds bricks to that wall. So it's very interesting to see the lack of, of care and nuance in the dialogue. I would honestly say that the acting really comes across visually. I mean, you get these beautiful nuanced face expressions and yet the tone of the film is like, oh, I don't care. Oh yes, this happened. Oh yes, I'm married and I had an affair with all of these other people. Oh yes, this happened and this happened. You know, it's it's very empty, but the not in its content but in its form and again I think I mentioned this in in one of my previous uh, podcast episodes the the place where style and substance meet is really where the meaning of any artistic piece is is uh comes to life basically so yeah, the meaningless affairs the slow walking the lying around on the floor the dialogue all of that kind of manifests itself in the in the themes of the film. But to add to that, what's more is that as more people are invited into the narration, the sound of the film blossoms into this kind of garden of ambiguity because people keep interrupting each other. The the volume of each character constantly changes and there's some contrast in tone, but mainly there are kind of whispering and talking over each other and we're never sure whether it's the dialogue or the character's thoughts or who is talking and that kind of ambiguity and that I don't know senselessness really complements I think the state of mind that the characters are in and lets us in on their thoughts or on what we think their thoughts may be and on what they think their thoughts may be because again when you're bored, when you feel empty, when there's when you're overwhelmed by colonial guilt, uh, the you can't think clearly. I'm assuming so. There is going to be this ambiguity to your life and probably to your lifestyle, as we see throughout the film. And I think overall, sound in film is a very crucial. It's it's a very crucial part of cinema and. I, I, I wanted to do this episode on The Conversation by um, Coppola, but I chose to do India Song because I recently watched it and I absolutely love the film. I never saw anything like it. I think that 
The conversation, while it sort of plays with sound and while it keeps sound, still is the focal point of the film, but within the frame, this film really takes sound outside of the frame and then reattaches it and creates something absolutely beautiful. So I recommend you to watch it. It's a very slow film, so watch it when you need to kind of slow down, but uh, no one can deny the revolutionary use of sound in this film, and I really loved watching it and taking notes. And uh, yeah, thank you for listening. This was Screenview Thoughts.